Welcome to Tibbs Farm. I'm Tibbs. Today we got a little special treat here. Um, Going to be talking about the Ford 8N uh, tractor. Uh, Ford made them from 1947 to 1952. We got, I don't know exactly which year, we got one right here. So, here she is. Um, been told uh, that uh, she kind of has the old Bessie kind of feel to her. Uh, don't know if that's the 8N in particular or this one right here, but I think for uh, now on, uh, I think she's actually been named old Bessie. Um, nice little tractor. Nothing giant or super expensive. Definitely something that, uh, you know, small acreage going, uh, have. Um, uh, yeah. Um, but I was looking, uh, see if there was any videos on all the grease points and I actually didn't find any for the 8N uh, found some for the other N series tractors so I figured you know what why not make a video about that so let's start off with the left side of the tractor figure might as well start from seat work the way around come back around Got an old dirty rag and grease gun. I don't know how well this is gonna be one-handed. But, as you can see, kicking grease out. Yeah, there's definitely parts that need to get replaced on here. And this little, there should be basically a rubber catch right in here and then whenever you get done now what a lot of people say make sure you go and wipe the grease fitting before and after and not gonna lie I actually did come through clean up because I actually did grease this thing yesterday there is a grease fitting that is bad. It's not completely bad. And I'll get to that one and explain what's wrong with it. But it's going wrong. And you got new color grease coming out. So that's this point right here. That point right there that we've hit. There's also grease fitting right here. Walking around. A lot of this stuff is gonna be symmetrical. So here, here, here. And then come around to the back. You have here, here, there. That's, I believe that's actually it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nope. I remember seeing ten yesterday. Up. Oh, yep. I missed one down here. <laughs> and as you can see. I missed it again today. I didn't clean it up. So yeah, like I said, I, I came through yesterday, greased these up. So I, I knew that they were already wiped down because I wiped them down. 90 degree fitting right here. Uh, 
Uh, and then new grease comes out. The reason why I keep saying and new grease comes out is because these grease fittings right here, I was pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping. I probably put 50 pumps in this little grease gun into it before I started getting any amount of grease to come out. And this particular one, this grease fitting, you'll see grease coming out up here or down here or both locations. This one up here, as you can see, uh, comes out down here. Um, this one here yesterday, uh, right before I started getting any amount of grease to come out, I actually had water start coming out down here. And that's one of the reasons why you do want to make sure that your equipment is greased, is grease will displace that water, um, not just lubricate the parts, but it actually help prevent the water that will corrode getting into the parts. So, uh, you grease your equipment and it will last. If you want to say screw it and not grease it, then don't come back complaining that your stuff rusted away. Now, this brush hog. There's a grease fitting down in this U-joint. There's another one down in this U-joint. Um... I didn't see anything down on here, but there is a place for actual oil in here. With these tractors, it's PTO. When the PTO is engaged, anytime the clutch is not depressed, this is spinning. This is actually a overrun clutch. Slips right on over the PTO shaft and then your uh, implement slips on as if, you know, it is the PTO shaft. Uh, what this does is when you come to a stop, you uh, hit that clutch. Without this, the Brush hog blades act like a giant flywheel and it'll keep spinning and it'll actually keep pushing this tractor. But this overrun clutch allows it to, let's see if I can get it to click. It's basically like a giant ratchet. Yeah, you can kind of hear the click, click. Yep, there you go, there's another click. So, it basically acts like a giant ratchet, allows the brush hog to slow down on its own and not keep pushing the tractor. But, enough about the overrun and the implement. This is about Greasing and I went and said I was gonna show a bad grease point So this one right here as we see new grease coming out And there you go Little bit of grease coming out of here. It's looking a lot better than it did yesterday yesterday Just kept going and going and going well for you that know, go ahead and skip forward. Those that don't, all this grease point is is just a little quick adapter that you're able to get grease gun onto. There's a tiny little spring in there, a tiny little ball. So whenever you start forcing grease, the grease pushes that little ball down into the spring and it allows the grease to go down into the cavity and then in all the lubricating spots. Sometimes spring starts to wear out or the ball 
will get stuck on some corrosion down. It'll allow grease to come out, but it won't stop the grease from coming back out the entrance. Um, so, I mean, it it is bad, but I'm able to still grease up the areas. Yes, this does need to get replaced. This isn't as critical replacing this one as if, or compared to one where the ball does not drop down. In that case, you, no matter how much you pump, you're never gonna get anything out here. And this whole purpose is to get the grease down in between these parts so they don't rust away. If you have one that you cannot get grease into, you can take it off. You can soak it in solvents like naphtha or mineral spirits or gasoline or whatever. And then try it again. Sometimes it'll work. Sometimes it won't. These little Zerg fittings, they're cheap enough. Uh, whenever I get around to it, I'll probably end up getting uh, a, a small box of Zerg fittings to just keep up in this little toolbox area right here. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can kind of see. little toolbox area up here down battery and gas tank area. Nice little place to go and keep spare parts. But I think that's enough. Um, there'll be more videos of old Bessie. Um, so until then still have things that we can do like right now the battery's dead um, some of the cables are corroded the last person that had this looks like they went and uh, spray painted it but there's a lot of stuff that like they didn't clean up I don't know how well this is coming out on the video but this paint's just flaking and they're still red underneath it. It means, you know, I'm gonna look, look down in here. Like they didn't clean the motor off; they just went straight to painting. Um, so anytime you go and buy a new, new to you used tractor, and it's got a nice clean paint job. That's one thing that you actually should probably be looking at is was it taken care of or are they trying to make it look pretty to uh, try to get an extra dollar out of it? Like, some of these things just... I mean, if you're going to paint it, wash it first. Get the grease off first. There's nothing wrong with the tractor with a nice fresh coat of paint, but we need to take more pride in the work that we do and do some prep work. So, we'll probably eventually go and start scraping some of this paint off, get it cleaned up, and repainting it. Because, yeah, this paint job, it... It's protecting from any new elements, but I mean, we can make it look a lot better. But that's enough of me rambling. I think I think that'd be a good spot to go and leave off for now. And as always, have a great day.